اهلا وسهلا في دورة 2020 everyone to the coolest tool award 2020 i'm Birgit. and i'm leah live from our outdoor studio here in berlin last year we could celebrate the coolest tool award at wikimedia in stockholm this year we cannot do that and that's why we're doing it now with you from home all around the world and here in berlin we're here today to celebrate the work of an amazing technical community at wikimedia Tools are super important on the Wikimedia project and so are the many volunteer developers who are creating tools, for example, to enhance the editing experience, improve the quality of the content, visualize data and so much more. A couple of weeks ago, the Cool Tool Academy asked for nominations for your favorite tools. Thank you so much for all the nominations. Today we are awarding tools, but it's not only about the tools, it's about the people behind the tools, the developers who develop the tools, but also the users of tools, who test the software, who use it, who report bugs and much more. Thank you all so much. Let's get started. And now let's go through the different categories together. And the first category is editor. Our winner for this category is AutoWiki Browser. This is a semi-automated editor that allows you to perform all of the repetitive tasks quicker and easier. <laughs> Let's hear more about why this tool is so cool and how it works. Hello folks, what's going on? 
So today I want to talk to you about a desktop piece of software that you can use to edit Wikipedia. It's called AutoWiki Browser. So AutoWiki Browser works for Windows and Linux. So if you are a Mac user, you can use this alternative right here. The cool thing about AutoWiki Browser is that it allows you to do a bunch of edits in no time. For instance, if you want to edit all the articles in a category, you can use AutoWiki Browser among other solutions. To be able to use AutoWiki Browser, you check the table right here. If it says that you have to request the right to edit Wiki Browser, as is the case in English Wikipedia, you have first to request permission to use it. To download AutoWiki Browser, you go here. After you click on this link right here, you download. When you unzip your download, you click on AutoWiki Browser. And there you go, you have AutoWiki Browser on your desktop. Because I'm using it for Arabic Wikipedia, the things that's supposed to be on the right are on the left side and vice versa. So in my case, I want to move all the items in one category into uh, another correct category. So when you first install AutoWiki Browser, you have to select your project from here. You add here the ISO language code for the Wikipedia you want to use. And then you log in with your account from Wikimedia. Now you can start your edits. So in this case, I will, I will select category and I will write the name of the category I want to move from. You click make list. And then I will click on move more and write the category I want to move from and the category I want to move to, the correct one. And then I click on start here and maybe add a small summary about the edit and then click start. So as you can see, I can save the edits here. So there you go, I made four edits on few clicks. So let's see if the changes take effect. As you can see, the new category will be will have the items now right now. So there you go. Enjoy responsibly. Okay, so the next category is actually one of my favorite categories, the newcomer category. It's for tools created by new developers or for new tools. And we are really happy to announce that this year's Coolest Tool Award goes to SDC Robots. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! So let's have a look how it works and why it is so cool. Hello everyone! SD Zero Bot is a bot that generates a collection of user space reports that streamlines processes like AFC and MPP by sorting articles by ORS topics and by showing excerpts of the lead section. The bot started operating in 2020 and it has a lot of potential for providing insightful lists and summaries for many use cases and communities. Let's have a look at some of the reports that the bot compiles. On the bot user page, you can see if we scroll down the list of the reports that the bot is compiling with some other information about what they are and when they run the last time. Let's look at the first one, for example, the most imported scripts. Here we see a list of the most imported user scripts on English Wikipedia. Here's some details about how the information is compiled. This information is very useful because it's usually super hard to know how much a user script is used. So this is already very insightful information. Let's look at another one. 
We're going to look now at the second one with the article for creation submissions. Here we can see the report with the pending article for creation submissions, with the date and some other information that is added to the report. So here we can see, if we scroll down, a list of sections with the topics and the articles for creation that are pending submission. If we scroll down, for example, I like the computing ones. And we can see here a list of articles with some enriched information, like the class that ORS predicts the article will be. This may or may not be accurate, so check the disclaimers at the top for more information. If we look at the main page for this specific topic, we can see even more information, which is very, very useful, like the class when it was submitted, the creator and number of edits, the length of the article, etc., and some other notes. So yeah, here we go. Very, very useful information for certain processes on the wikis. Finally, let's look at a quote from a user of the bots reports. This tool has made it easier to find AFC submissions, new pages for MPP, articles proposed for deletion, prod AFD, good article nominations, peer review requests, etc., where the article subject is of my interest. The short descriptions, the excerpts, the RS sorting helps editors find articles they are interested in. Before SD0Bot, there did not exist any tool that used the very useful RS Topic Prediction Service, nor one that listified articles at the various processes, AFC, AFD, etc., with excerpts. And that's it. Congratulations to SD0Bot. Our next category is impact. This is about tools that have a broad or deep effect on the Wikimedia projects. And our winner for this category is Proofread Page Extension. This tool made a huge difference on Wikisource. Hi everyone, the Proofread page extension is a MediaWiki extension that can render a book either as a column of OCR text beside a column of scanned images or broken into its logical organization, such as chapters or poems, by using transclusion. It allows for easy comparison of the text to the original digitization and it shows the text in several ways without actually duplicating the original text. The Proofread page extension is at the heart of the Wikisource projects. It was adopted in 2008 and has had immense impact through the years, as we can see in the stats page. If we dig in, we can see that there's proofreading of pages going up through the years, with a huge amount of pages proofread every day. If you want to learn more about proofreading, there's a great manual on Wikisource where you can learn more about it. For example, the pages of a book go through different statuses, and we can see here in the documentation that they go through proofreading in different states depending on what the editors do when they proofread the pages. There is also a great beginner's guide where it explains how to proofread for new users. It also suggests getting started with the proofread of the month. This is something that the Wikisource community does every month where they find a new work to proofread and collaborate on. You can see here the proofread of the month, and if you scroll down, you can also see past collections that were proofread in the past. For the current proofread of the month, I checked the index, and the several works have already been proofread. Yellow, as you remember, means proofread, and green means validated, which means that it has been proofread by more than one user. So I found a different work to have a look at the process. You can see here the index, which is a very important part, and here are the pages. We can choose one page to check the proof reading, and here we see the actual text that was 
detected by the OCR and the page of the book. If we click Edit, we will see on the side the page of the book, which we can move to read through it. And on the left, we can see the text that we have to adapt or fix in case there are problems. We have other tools. We can make the layout horizontal if that's what we need. And there are many other things that we could do. Once you're done proofreading the page of the book with the text that was recognized by the OCR or edited by someone, you can head down, input a summary of the changes that you made, and change the status of the page if it was fully proofread. For example, yellow would be putting it on the proofread status, and then someone else will have to validate it. Or if there are problems with the page, you can change it to the problematic state. Then you would publish the changes, and voila, the page has been proofread. As I said before, this extension is at the heart of Wikisource, and it's indispensable for the website. Congratulations to the Proofread page extension for winning an award on the impact category. Moving on to a new category, experience. This is about tools that are especially intuitive or easy to use. And our winner in this category is... Listen to Wikipedia, a website that is providing a different experience on the editing activity on Wikipedia. Let's have a look. Hi, thanks Leah and Bridget for introducing. Now we are giving a 10 second music break. Do you hear this relaxing and pleasant music? This is the voice of real-time editing to Wikipedia. Each note you hear is another contribution to free knowledge. Let's try to listen to this voice more carefully. All these sweet audiovisual stimuli carry a meaning actually. Bells are additions. This one. Strings are subtractions. Now you have just heard it. Green circles are anonymous edits and purple circles are bots. White circles are edits from registered users. This one right here. Bonus! You will see a blue message on the top of the screen when a new user is joined. This is great luck if you ever saw it. Don't forget to welcome them by adding a note to their talk pages. Let's talk about the possible settings of the software. When we scroll down, we will see a list of recent changes that we have just listened to. Right below, there are some settings to hide some elements of the page. For example, we can hide recent changes console if we like to. Next, we have reached the language selection section. We can listen Wikipedia, Wikipedias of some other languages than English. Also, we can listen to Wikidata too. By the way, I bet it will be crazy fast music. Let's check. Yeah. As expected. The last option that Listen to Wik Wikipedia software gave us is the ability to filter by tags in edit summary. I personally find this super helpful when it comes to follow up change logs of an editathon. If you are a facilitator of an editathon, tell everyone to include a tag to their edit summaries and listen to their changes from Listen to Wikipedia. Don't forget to grab your popcorn though. Thanks to this super cool project, every edit has a voice in the roar. Remember that every time you make an edit, you release a note to the air. Make sure that you visit at listen.headnot.com and try this cool tool out. Now we are back to Bridget and Leia.
Okay, now we are coming to the category reusable for tools that serve many wikis and projects. We are really happy to announce Global User Page as the winner. Congratulations! Let's have a look why this tool is so amazing and how it works. Hi folks! Global User Page is a media wiki extension that enables global user pages on a wiki farm. By default, on each wiki you log in, you can create a user page, a different one that is. This extension allows you to have one single user page that is shared across wikis automatically. At Wikimedia, users with an account can create a user page for all Wikimedia projects on MetaWiki, as you can see in the documentation. Now, let's try it out for my account. I have this account where on ESWiki, I have my small user page. And uh, for example, on Catalan Wikipedia, I do not have a user page. I do not want to go to each wiki and create a different user page. So I want to create a global user page. For that, I will go to MetaWiki. As you can see, we are on MetaWiki. And now you can see by the red link that I do not have a user page on this wiki. So let's create that one. You'll see the page doesn't exist. I'm going to click Create. And here, as you can see, we have a banner saying that we're about to create a global user page, which is exactly what we wanted. There's some links to documentation, which is great. And now let's create our awesome user page. Cool. This is exactly what I wanted. And let's publish the page. Here we go. Now we have a user page on Meta, as you can see. So now to check that it worked, let's go to German Wikipedia, for example, which I haven't been there before. I'll click on my username. And here we go. The user page that we just created on Meta and a link to the global user page. We can do the same thing on Italian Wikipedia, for example. And if we check Spanish Wikipedia, our existing user page is still the same. To finalize, let's hear some quotes from some users. Global user page is a key and essential feature for the global wiki community. It allows users to keep their user pages in sync, reduces friction, and makes coordination across wikis a lot easier. And another user said, I can still remember how it was before Global User Page became available in 2015. Maintaining user pages across wikis was cumbersome, and mine definitely got out of sync. So, congratulations to Global User Page, and let's see the next one. And now let's discover a new category, quality. This is about tools that improve accuracy or completeness of the content or help detecting vandalism. And the winner for this category is Abuse Filter. You probably know about it, but let's have a look at how cool it is. Hello. I am FUBAR4004, and I'd like to complain about Abuse Filter. This MediaWiki extension allows to define criteria for edits. And when the criteria match, then an automated reaction happens, which you also defined. For example, your wiki can have a filter which does not allow anonymous users to add external links to a page. Or you could block users who try to remove more than 2,000 characters from a page. Abuse filter is enabled on a number of Wikimedia wikis. Are you a vandal, just like me? I love making bad edits on the wikis. But abuse filter made my life harder, while it allows you to spend more time on editing content and less time on reverting me. Here is how it works. 
Global filters are automatically enabled on smaller and medium Wikimedia wikis. And for your own wiki, you can set up some local filters. Here you can see an example. Now, when I try to make a bad edit, I am stopped by abuse filter. <sighs> With the help of abuse filter, you reduced my vandalism by 90%. If you are a smaller wiki community, check out the Small Wiki Toolkit Starter Kit on Meta and learn how you can use Abuse Filter to stop me. Abuse Filter. Congratulations for supporting reliable, free knowledge. So we are now coming to the developer category, tools that primarily serve developers. And I am really happy to announce that PyWiki Bot is the winner of this year's Code Tool Award. Congratulations! PyWiki Bot is a Python library and a script collection supported by a great community. Let's look more into it, what makes the tool so cool, and what you can use it for. Hi everyone. Let's talk about PyWikiBot. PyWikiBot is a Python library and collection of scripts that automate work on MediaWiki websites. Originally designed for Wikipedia, it is now used throughout the Wikimedia Foundation's projects and on many other wikis. PyWikiBot is a tool for developers, and with it you can create your own scripts, as shown in the documentation. PyWikiBot also comes with many different scripts that you can use that are already built and are very, very useful. You can see them going to the scripts page on the manual, and you can run them with this command. Now, let's quickly try PyWikiBot. First, we need to install it. There are multiple options for trying PyWikiBot. You can try it on Pause, which is a Wikimedia service that offers Python notebooks. You can install it on your computer and run it. Or you can run it on Toolforge on the Wikimedia Cloud services. For our demo, let's build a local script. I've installed PyWikiBot on my own computer. And now, let's switch to it. Here's a folder where I've installed PyWikiBot locally with the latest stable version. I've already installed the needed dependencies, generated the user files with my credentials and the projects that I'm interested in, and logged in to my account on Wikimedia. Next, I've written a very small script that we're going to try based on the example on the wiki. Here, we imported PyWikiBot. Here, we create a site for Spanish Wikipedia, which is where I want to run my script. We grab my user page. And then we replace the text of the page, changing hola with adios. After that, we save the page and give it a summary. Let's run our script. Now, when we run the script, we can see the user page was saved. And if we go to it from the previous contents that said hola, now we have our new edit, adios. The other way we mentioned of running PyWikiBot is by using the existing scripts. In the case of replacing content, there's already a script that can help us with it. Here, you can see how we can run replace.py, and we're going to run it with Python, PyWikiBot.py, replace, and then we're going to tell it the page that we're going to replace some content on. In our case, my user page. We're going to replace the other way around, adios, with hola. So we're going to run it. Here we can see it's asking us what the summary of the edit is going to be. It's giving me a nice translated summary. I'm just going to hit Enter. It fetched the page from Wikipedia. And it's showing me a diff of the edit that it's going to do. Looks great. So I'm going to tell it yes to accept the changes. And as you can see, it did the edit. Now, if we head back to my user page and refresh again, we can see the contents are back with the last script run that we did. 
Let's read some quotes from PyWikiBot users. The value of PyWikiBot is incredible. Endless scripts available and a strong community behind it. It makes bot development much more accessible for folks with less programming skills. And another one. PyWikiBot is a key framework for developing bots for the Wikimedia projects or any media wiki wiki. Its impact is huge. It makes bot development much easier, and it comes with scripts for a variety of tasks. It has an active developer community with a mailing list, IRC channel, and more. It has more than 160 contributors to the code base. Okay, we are coming to our next category, diversity, for tools that help to include a variety of languages, people, cultures, etc. And this year's winner in the category diversity is Lingua Libre. Congratulations. Lingua Libre is an amazing tool. And with Lingua Libre, you can record and upload words in a variety of languages to Wikimedia Commons and use them in other wikis like Wikidata and also Wiktionary. Lingua Libre is indeed awesome. Its goal is to gather as many audio files as possible to collect words and phrases in plenty of different languages. It's multilingual, it's cross-wiki, it's uploading files on commons on your behalf and also improving wiktionaries and even Wikidata. Lingua Libre is bringing more visibility to plenty of underserved languages. Let's have a look at how it works and how you can contribute. So, I want to start recording my voice. First of all, I need to make a test to try on my microphone. Coolest tool award. Coolest tool award. All right. The next step is to give a bit of information about myself. It's important um, that the contributor indicates um, their, uh, the languages that they speak and where they're from, because we also take in account the different uh, accents or dialects in Lingua Libre. So I'm going to say that I speak French as a native um, language. And I'm also going to add um, that I live in France because, of course, the sound of French would be pretty different if I would have uh, learned it uh, in Quebec, for example. This list is coming from Wikidata, by the way. So here I can directly enter the words that I would like to pronounce. I can choose the language and I can also get inspiration from other places. For example, I can get a list. I can also have a look at things that are located nearby and I can directly pick a Wikimedia category. Here's a nice list of the most um, used words in French. Sounds good. Now I'm in the recording studio Whenever I'm ready, I can start clicking here and then just read the different words and the system will automatically detect when I'm done and create the files. Je, tu, il, elle, on, nous, vous, il, elle. All right, that's enough for now. I click on next. The next step is to listen to the recordings again, just to make sure that everything's fine. Then I can select the ones I want and I'm ready to publish on Wikimedia Commons. Let's do it. Let's have a look at my Commons contributions. Indeed, this file was created. It has the title, the description, information about me, everything that people need so they can reuse the file. 
Oh look, I'm on the main page now. So the coolest tool award committee really love this tool because it's super easy to use, as you could see, and um, it's supporting all of the minority languages in the world, which is pretty awesome. Thanks to everyone who contributed to the development of Lingua Libre, the community adding content to it, and um, please record more words in your languages. Let's have a look at the tiny category. The tiny category is for tools that are either small or doing only one thing, but doing it well. And the winner for the tiny category is... Crop Tool! Congratulations! Crop Tool is a tool that allows you to cut or resize pictures either on Wikimedia Commons or on the other Wikimedia projects. And now let's have a look at how it works. Hello everyone, here's Crop Tool. Crop Tool has one purpose and it's very good at it. It is a tool for cropping images in the Wikimedia Commons and other websites. It supports JPEG, PNG, TIFF files and animated GIF files. It can extract single pages from DJVU or PDF files for JPEG cropping. It features automatic border detection and it has login authentication with OAuth. It also has other features specific to other wiki workflows, like being aware of certain templates or categories that are present in the images to make smarter decisions and appropriately edit. We can see those on the GitHub repository on the documentation there. You can see an example here with remove border, for example, or watermark. You can also see how much crop tool is used. It is a widely used tool on commons. And if you look at the recent changes, you'll see the amount of edits it has. If you want to try crop tool, you can try the category images with watermarks as linked in the documentation page of the tool. And here you can see a bunch of images with watermarks that could use some editing, which crop tool is great at. For example, I'm going to visit special random category images with watermarks with the category that we just visited. And I'm going to get a random image that we will try the tool on. So I'm going to click on it now and I get this image with this very cool building. As you can see, it has a watermark at the bottom. We're gonna go and activate Crop Tool from the link in the documentation page. And then we'll get a little wizard where we will approve the gadget to be installed in my account. And once it's installed, it will give us some instructions about how to refresh the page so that you can see the gadget loaded and use it. If we go to our image that we wanna edit right now, we refresh and we see the link the crop tool is there in the corner and then we just click it it will take us to the tool where we'll have to authenticate i was already authenticated before so i got directly to the image and now you can see the image here with a little window where we can crop our image very very straightforward we can see some numbers up here where we can see the specific numbers for the dimensions and the cropping we use the magic border locator in this case it just selects the full image as it is because there's no weird borders and we can then crop using the handles on the rectangle. Right now we're cropping using the free method, but we can also choose to keep the aspect ratio and it will keep the same size, the aspect ratio of the image. And we can, for example, if we wanted to crop it without changing the aspect ratio, we could do that and then move it around. For this one, we're going to keep it as free because I don't think the aspect ratio is very important in this image right now. So we'll crop it like this. And then we will choose the method of cropping. I will choose the precise method. And then we will click and it will crop the image. We'll see a preview of the cropped image where we can inspect that everything looks as it should. And then we can see if we should select overwrite or upload as a new file. This is kind of tricky. There's some rules. So please check comments overwriting existing files for the guidelines on when this is appropriate. This will give you some guidance. For example, if we look at minor improvements, one of them is removal of a watermark, which is what we were doing. And then if you've removed the watermark, you can check this checkbox and then you will get a, a nice edit summary of what happened. Click upload 
and then the edit will be performed on your behalf and successful. Now we can go directly to the result to see how it looks like. And we can see the edited image without the watermark. Looks great, did a great job. And you can see the new version with the edit summary that we saw before. So yeah, congratulations to PropTool for winning the Tiny Award. Cheers. Okay, we are now coming to our last category, the egg beater, where we hand out for tools that are in use for more than 10 years. And the winner, the egg beater in the category, the egg beater, goes to X Tools. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! So Xtools is a series of statistics tools and we are going to look more into that in a second and I'm handing over to the demo. Hello guys, what's good? So today I want to talk to you about a tool that has been around for a while now. I'm pretty sure many of you have used it before. It's called Xtools. So Xtools allows you to do particularly two basic things. It allows you to check the a user's contribution on an article and also the information and the details about an article. So if you have Xtools enabled in your account, you can see a line under any article that says uh, number of revisions and dates, etc. So you can click on full page detail statistics to have more information. When you click on that, it takes you to a page that has all the information you want to know about the article, for instance, how many edits it has and time based, etc. And you also have a list of major contributors the editors to the article. So when you click on top edits or edit counter, it takes you to the page that has the information about the specific user. For instance, this user has, has a lot of edits and you can see here the projects in, on which the user contributes and a pie chart about the major projects in which they contribute. So if you want to activate Xtools on English Wikipedia, you can simply go to uh, Gadgets. It's under Preferences. And you scroll down until you find Xtools. You check it and then you click Save. If you don't use English Wikipedia that much, and you want to have it activated on all projects of Wikimedia, you can simply go to MediaWiki, the website, and go to the page that's titled Xtools, and you scroll down until you find a piece, small piece of code here. You copy it, and you paste it into this page right here. So when you open this page, you have your username and you click on edit source. You paste the small piece of code here and you click save. And there you go. You have extols in pretty much all the Wikimedia projects and you can have fun with it. Okay, so last but not least, we are coming to the honorable mentions. Honorable mentions are a really good way to secretly award more tools than you can possibly award in 10 categories. So let's have a look. Here we go. One of the winners of this category is Listeria Bot by Magnus Manske. This tool is a lifesaver when it comes to generating lists on Wikipedia based on Wikidata queries. 
This handibot is used by brilliant projects like Women in Red, Wikilaus Monuments and many more. As this user says, it is extremely useful for Wikipedia projects. The other tool that deserves honorable mention this year is Erwig's Copy Vio Detector by Ben Kurtovic. No one likes dealing with copyright violations. This amazing tool helps detect possible violations for you. We've heard this tool is heavily used by reviewers in German Wikipedia. The third winner of this category is Wikidata Lexin Forms by Lukas Werkmeister. In the words of a user of this tool, very convenient way to add Lexims to Wikidata, as easy as playing Tetris. Even more, it has multiple language support. The next winner in the honorable mention category is Convenient Discussions by JWVGH, which allows the user to post and edit comments without switching to a separate page. The users of this tool said that they didn't know how they could live without it. Convenient Discussions, you are loved. Have you ever had to use a proprietary poll software? Not anymore, thanks to our next winner of honorable mention, Woodele by John Frederick. It is a deployment of a free software to schedule events and create polls called From a Date on Wikimedia Cloud Toolforge. The last winner but not least is Entity Explosion by Toby Hudson. This tool is a browser extension to discover links and information about the topic of a web page using data from Wikidata. As one reviewer wrote, taking the power of Wikidata with me wherever I go across the web. Great job, Entity Explosion. So that's the end of this award ceremony. Thanks a lot for joining. Thanks to everyone who contributed to the tools and thanks to everyone who nominated tools. See you next year. Bye. Tools for contribute to the world. Thank you for all the tools. for all the tools. Thank you for all the tools. Thank you for Thanks to the cool people for all the cool tools. Gracias por todas las herramientas.